You can do it, bro. I'll tell you, you can do it. You can do it, man. It can get better. Get serious. Life is serious. We call it life or death. Somebody asked me one time if I had a good description of life. I said, yes, I think I've got a good one. Life is the struggle to keep death at a respectable distance. What would you do if you just learned today that you only had six months to live? What would you stop doing? What would you do more of? Who would you spend time with? Now, the answer to that question is very interesting because what it tells you is what you really value. What is really important to you? And what we have found is that self-esteem, satisfaction, happiness in life comes from getting your goals and your activities congruent with your values, with your priorities, with what you consider to be really important. You can't see all the cards in your hand. It's not saying the cards aren't there. It's just you haven't matured enough to see them. And there will come a time you keep going and you keep learning and you keep growing uh, that one day you'll look down and the card you needed was there and it's been there all along. But that ain't going to come for a while. Most people aren't obsessed with their goals because they don't believe they're worthy of them. It's easy to dream about what you want. But in between where you are and what you want, there's a tremendous amount of stuff you got to change and do. We lose because we are okay with ignoring our faults, right? It's not until you can accept your faults, your bullshit, that you can grow and do better. There's so many things that we place the blame on others for that are truly our responsibility. And it becomes a habit. It's a force of habit. So it's not until you break that habit that you can do bigger and better shit. I didn't realize how quick life was. Because life is short, I don't have time to focus on what's not. You have an opportunity of a lifetime. And where much is given, much is required. Everybody knows you got to pay a price for winning, but most people aren't willing to pay it. They may pay it once, but literally you got to pay it every single day. And the crazy part about that is the price changes daily. Just like the stock market goes up and down, the price of winning changes on a daily, daily basis. And you got to be willing to pay that price, whatever it is on that day. When you get what you want in life and you've struggled, can you somehow still find yourself? And the world can call you king, they can call you glorious, they can call you phenomenal, but that's only for one day. Because sooner or later, you'll go by the mirror and look at yourself. And you'll determine what that man, that woman has to say. For it isn't your father, your mother, or your wife not even your children's whose judgment you will one day have to pass. The fellow whose verdict accounts the most in life is the man that's standing back from the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest. For with that clear mind in the end, that you've passed all these dangerous tests in life, all these difficult tests, all these challenges, but is the man in the mirror still your friend? You have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. There's a trip in your life that you want to take two years, and it might take 10 years. And you want to make that trip in 10 years, well, it might take 20 years. And just because you're not at your destination, 
right now does not mean you failed to reach your destination. It just means you're not there right now. You've got to have patience. You've got to stay the course, be disciplined, and never lose sight, never lose sight of the base core of your dream. If you don't, at some point, be defiant against what the world or your caregivers or your past experience has pounded into your brain incorrectly, unfairly, you will forever be stuck with that story. You are not responsible for what happened to you. You survived what happened to you, but you do have a responsibility to heal yourself. It's a temporary thing. So is life. I mean, so is life itself. It's temporary. You know, when you really think about it, it's all temporary. So the way I look at life, especially right now, is that someday it's going to be your last day. So I'm going to live every day as if it's my last day and do stuff that I always wanted to do because I don't want to go, oh man, I'm dying tomorrow. I'm dying now and I missed it. I don't want to think about what I could have, should have done. I don't see how in the world I'm going to get out of it and move forward by taking a step. By taking a step. How big a step? How big a step can you take? But take a step. All right, just take a step. The world needs a superhero. Not one from the comic pages, but someone who's willing to be more than ordinary. To be extraordinary. But in order to do that, you must qualify to be extra. You must qualify to do extra. You must put in that hard work, that determination. You must be up when others are sleeping. You must grind when others are pacing. If you pan it down here, you see it's about three o'clock in the morning and there's not a car or a person in sight. If you pan over here, it's the same thing. Not a car or a person in sight. You don't get better on the daggone couch. You get better by coming out here and getting fuck after it every daggone day. You keep moving forward. As a man, our only job is to keep moving forward on our mission. Every man needs a purpose, a mission, and a team. So we must always be chasing our purpose, mission, and a team. It doesn't mean that just because you're chasing it or looking for it, you're gonna find it mm -hmm. right away because life comes to us in winning seasons and losing seasons. And you might be in a losing season if you keep holding yourself accountable and moving forward, you will expedite the winning season that's guaranteed to come. You must be willing to find out how empty can I become in order to tap into my reserve tank. You see, it's easy to be a villain. You see, villains and heroes go through the same trauma, same drama, but they both respond in different ways. And it's what they do with those days after the trauma that determines whether you play the role of a victim or survivor, a villain or a superhero. That is a choice that you make. You are super every day that you choose to be. Stop letting people define you. You're gonna run into people that's friends, family, associates. They ain't winning life. They gave up on their dreams. Their dreams, they work out because they ain't work their dreams. But y'all don't let them tell you that y'all can't work your dreams. All of y'all got a shot. Be mindful of the information that y'all take in from losers. There's a lot of losers out here. A lot of losers, a lot of people that gave up on their dreams. A lot of people that don't love themselves. Just because they don't love themselves, don't let them put their energy on y'all, their insecurities and the fears on y'all. Y'all got a shot out here. Own your life. Own your life.
your life? If I look right now out in the world and also in the past, what I witness is simply like this. There is the tendency that a lot of things are being outsourced to everybody else, to institutions, to other people which lie outside of you. Either we look out for somebody able to give us something, or if something is going wrong, we look for someone that we can blame. So it doesn't matter which direction we go. The point is, you never say, I was making the mistake. It's because of me. It seems like you have a bad day, your colleagues are bad, the day is bad, the traffic is bad, your work is bad. No, nothing of that is bad. It's your attitude which is bad. See, the problem is that we oftentimes compartmentalize, we limit ourselves to such a narrow definition of who we can be and what we can do to impact this world, to change other lives. You limit God to that. You, all you thought was just an athlete. All you thought you were was just the ASB president. All you thought you were was a city mayor. You're so much more than that. You're so much more than that. And the most amazing thing is that when you finally get the opportunity to showcase how dynamic you are, how many dimensions you can traverse, that's when you get to see, wow, I've been playing small this whole time. But the only thing that you can do with potential is either fulfill it or waste it. Throw all the waste away, flush it, get rid of it, and tap into your full potential, lean into it, and discover what that can do if you choose to be great. Use it as fuel, because whatever you faced now faces you. And once you faced it, it loses its power to threaten you. The monster under the bed cannot handle the monster you become on top of the bed. Michael Jordan said in one of his interviews, when they said, you are unbelievable, you're the greatest basketball player of all. But he says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots. Does it make him a failure? No. We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. And winners will fail and get up. Fail and get up. You always get up. You know, a lot of people go around the world and they go like, who am I? You know, I don't know who I am. And if you want to know who you are, you can make a case to be made, a very compelling case, that God is telling you who you are by what you love. And if you get close to what you love, what you love expands. And in the pursuit of excellence, in any talent that you are given, that you are given, that everybody is given, in the expression of excellence, you do honor to your maker. You can only love someone if you know how love feels. If you don't have love inside of you, how can you give it? If you don't have thankfulness inside of yourself, how can you give it? So everything is starting with yourself. What you want to see in this world what you want to bring into this world, whatever you think is missing into this world. There are, we are eight billion people, so maybe eight billion people have different ideas what is missing in this world. But the point is, whatever you want to bring in, first of all, show it. First of all, you be the representant of what you think is missing there. Why would you not go for it? Why would you not take a chance? At, at one point in time, you got to take a chance on you. And in one moment, it might feel like you've let so much opportunity go by. But the most exciting thing about it is there's a whole world of opportunity before you now. Look at all of the doors that have just opened before you just because you took one little risk. All of that preparation has led to this moment and you took advantage of it and look what's happened. That's the story of the hero. That's the story of this hero. You, you're that hero. You are the one to step into the spotlight. You are the one to take on the hardest challenges, the one who can fight 
multiple battles at the same time because that's how strong you are. At least, that's how strong you can become. But it has to be your decision. No one can make you do this. The more responsibility you take on, the more meaning your life has, and the higher degree of responsibility that you agree voluntarily to try to bear, the richer your life will be. And no one's ever told that, and it's, it's gonna be rough, you know, because it's complicated. You have a complicated job, and you try to help the careers of the people around you. You try to solve tough problems, and aid suffering, and do all of that. It's like, it's weight, it's responsibility, but it's, there's glory in it, there's real glory in it, there's deep meaning in it, and young people are starving for that, because no one ever tells them that. It's like, you're way more than you think. Man, stand up, do something difficult. Sometimes we don't understand, like, what is this thing? What is my purpose? Why am I here? Why do I have to go through this pain? Why do I have to go through this fear all the time? Why can't it just be peaceful all the time? Then there wouldn't be life. You know, it wouldn't be life. We have to, we have to take life at its term, life on life term, not our life on our terms. Live life on life terms, not on our terms. Something that we call choice. You have the choice. The suffering comes and you run away, or the suffering comes, the pain comes, and you face it. We are overcoming the suffering. We are not running away from the suffering. You are overcoming it. I hope that uh, you, uh, you find the rest, all right? Rest with the understanding that I'm catching my breath so I can come back and continue on my journey. So I can continue doing what I'm doing, all right? But rest, okay? Whether it's mental, emotional, or physical, don't wear yourself out to the point that you're no good to anybody, including yourself. No one can force you into it. No one can force you to be great. You have to choose to do so because that's when your soul comes through. And I hope with every bit of my heart, I hope that the day you decide, others are there to witness. That's who you are. I'm not talking to your neighbor. I'm not talking to the person next to you. I'm talking to you. You are the one. Go get it. As a matter of conscious experience, the reality of your life is always now. And I think that this is a liberating truth about the nature of the human mind probably nothing more important to understand about your mind than that if you want to be happy in this world. The past is a memory, it's a thought arising in the present. The future is merely anticipated. It is another thought arising now. What we truly have is this moment. At the end of the day, everything that we do starts and ends with our attitude how we perform, how we function, how we get along with others. It all starts with attitude. Now, the beautiful thing about attitude is there's only one person that gets to decide our attitude, and that's, of course, ourselves. It's changing the conversation in your own head. It's recognizing your greatness. It's recognizing the great things you were put on this earth to do. It's not the fact that you are unblemished. It's the fact that you are unbothered by that loss and you go back to the drawing board and find out what does it take to win again. That takes real greatness. You have a rematch clause in your life for a reason. That's why every day is a new day. It's a rematch against everything that has ever defeated you and you get to go back at it. You don't make it, no, no one makes it. Every day, you have to be trying to do better. Make sure that you approach life with a learned perspective. You're a better person than you were the day before, and whatever you're trying to do, whatever it is that you're doing, 
you're trying to do better every day. That's just that day. Mm -hmm. The next day, you got to go back to work. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You have the power to make that decision. You can decide I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure, that it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us, and that your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. All of the time that you have spent being humble, being quiet, being meek in the corner of the room has not been noble. It has not been an act of valor. It has been an act of cowardice. Believing that you are not worthy of stepping into the spotlight, that you are not worthy of sharing your voice, of encouraging, of uplifting, of being the example of excellence that may just inspire the person next to you. That positive self-talk about who you are will make you become that person, that person that other people will see. I have to believe that I'm great. I have to believe that I'm capable. I have to believe that I can win. And if I do those things, we can make that happen. The man or woman the arena has been waiting for and your name is being called and echoed from the foundations of the earth with a plan from God to enable you to win. All you have to do is stay in the fight. It's never been about your record. It's about how much you're counted on. All you have to do is stay in the fight. We manage to never really connect with the present moment and find fulfillment there because we are continually hoping to become happy in the future and the future never arrives. It is always now. However much you feel you need to plan for the future to anticipate it, to mitigate risks, the reality of your life is now. Even when we think we're in the present moment, we are in very subtle ways always looking over its shoulder, anticipating what's coming next. We're always solving a problem, and it's possible to simply drop your problem, if only for a moment, and enjoy whatever is true of your life in the present. The things that influence us the most, the things that affect the way you think and feel and live your life and the actions you take and the results you get, most of what controls us are invisible forces. Invisible forces, and the most powerful of forces of all are human emotion, anger, rage, love, passion, compassion, those will change you more than, and they're invisible, but they determine the quality of your life. Overcoming the negative conversation, that inner dialogue that's going on all the time, all the time, even when you don't want it to be there, you can't stop yourself right now from thinking, you can't do it, it's going on. And so learning how to empower yourself, part of doing that is standing up to yourself. You've got to stand up inside yourself sometimes and say, shut up! That's why you've got to learn to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to stand up inside yourself. Working on yourself, watching that inner dialogue, it will determine the quality of your life. Playing small does not only affect you. Why do you play small? Why do you choose to remain silent when you know you were meant to speak up? Stop looking at the enemy and thinking that the challenges that you face, that there's a glass ceiling, that there's someone holding you back. And remember that you were born for greatness and that you have a record of all of your own. You've defeated bigger challenges than this. This one just happens to be the newest one. Don't let your fear outweigh your faith. If you can just keep believing, when nothing in you is working, when all your external forces have given way, if you can just manage to somehow keep hoping, just hope. You ain't even really got to believe. All you got to do is hope. 
wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. There are too many of us that are waiting for right situations to produce. What I'm asking you is, yeah, you went through a hard season, and yeah, another one might be up ahead, but what are you producing in the middle? Like, legitimately, why are you guys so obsessed with what they think? Like, why the f do you care? Why do you care? Why do you care? Those people are going to be in the same spot five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now that they are now. And you're sitting here stressing and being frustrated and having anxiety over what these people have to say about what you're trying to do, bro. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. And every bit of energy that you spend concerning yourself with that is a bit of energy that you're not spending on getting better and moving your play down the field, man. You ever had a gut feeling that maybe you were meant for more, <laughs> but you weren't really sure what the next best steps were to achieve it? Me too. So what's your more? What's your, 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 your destination? The person you have to spend the most time listening to in your life is yourself. Try not to lose their respect. Even if you're on the bench, your mindset must be put me in the game, coach. You gotta start putting that in the atmosphere. Give me the opportunity, I'm ready. But you can't say that and you can't put it in the atmosphere if you don't put in the work. The work begins in the mind. It's a decision that you want to do more than just exist. That you want the opportunity to lead somebody by example. And in order to be an example, you must make one of yourself. You must be willing to evolve from a child to an adult with purpose. You must be willing to put away childish things and find a way to put in work no matter where you are. This is an opportunity of a lifetime and I'm gonna take advantage of it. So y'all gotta do me a favor, from now on you do what you do. I don't care if you practice it, you put in 120% every time or you don't put in nothing because, listen to me very closely, today this opportunity you have, it might not be here next year, it might not be here the year after next, it might not be here the year after that. This is the only moment you've got. And you better take advantage of this particular moment. Let me tell you about a voice. Not this voice, but the one inside. The one that whispers. It tells me what's right and what's not, when to leave and where to go. It's not Shakespeare. It does not speak in memorable lines. My inner voice always gives it to me straight. Sometimes that voice is crystal clear. Go. Stay, right, wrong. Sometimes it merely whispers. Don't let it drown in a noisy world. Because in the end, no man, woman, or algorithm knows what's right for you. Always trust your inner voice. Everybody has one. Few listen to it. And if one is passionate and committed, in the noble pursuit of excellence within their chosen field. Be that the arts, technology, science, humanitarianism, conservationism. Then I would say one has a moral obligation and uh, an ethical duty to be of service and to always strive to be part of the solution, not the problem. 
Success is not easy. It's not guaranteed. If it was, everybody would have it and everybody would do it. Knowing that there's a drive inside each of us, there's something that calls to us that in the middle of the night, it gnaws and nags at us. We know we're meant for more. You know you're meant for more. And when I think about that call, that sometimes is silent, sometimes it's faint, and other times it's ringing loud as can be. The times in my life when I've experienced that have been what carried me through the hard times. And I want to remind you that like hard times don't last. And I know sometimes it feels like the storm never ends. I know sometimes it feels like our breakthrough is never going to come. I know it feels like that at times. And trust me, a ray of sunshine shows its face. I'm hit with another storm. Every time I get my head above water, it's like another flood hits my life. Every time I feel like I'm getting ahead, it feels like I get knocked back down. But I always hold on to this truth that no storm lasts forever. I always hold on to this truth that joy will always come in the morning. I know it's hard. I know you want to quit. I know you want to throw your hands up in the air like I've done everything. I've exhausted my resources. I've exhausted my relationships. I've done all these things. I've burned the bridges. I've hurt people. Okay, maybe you have, but there's redemption and there's an opportunity to come back. You know that there's more for you. You know that you are destined for greatness. And it's just somewhere along the way your vision got clouded. Somewhere along the way, voices got into your head and told you you can't do that. That's for other people. You've done too many things wrong. People aren't gonna listen to you. They don't wanna hear your message. You have nothing to offer. That's a lie. It's an absolute lie. That I have value no matter what. And my mistakes don't define me and my wins don't define me. I just am. And in those places, I have a capacity to be the greatest version of myself that I could ever be. With no limitations, no roadblocks, no barriers. But I still have to work. One of the biggest things that you'll ever face in life is the challenge of living out your dream. You see, when you finally sit down and you write it down, there's really no consequence to it until you put a date to it. Put a date to it and then make a date with it. The date to it is, is your day that you will make sure, come hell or high water, I will do everything that I said I would do and this is exactly when it will be done. You have the ability to do amazing things, but you won't be able to do them until you step out on faith. If you say the truth and, and nothing else, you'll have an immense adventure as a consequence. You won't know what's going to happen to you, and you have to let go of your clinging to the, to the outcome. You have to let go, but the truth will reveal the world the way it's intended to be revealed, and the consequence for you will be that you'll have the adventure of your life. The challenge is not potential. The challenge is not even talent. The challenge is desire. They said effort is the indicator of interest. And so I think the biggest challenge is that people have potential. They actually have some skill set. I just think most people don't want it. They don't put forth the effort. And you only give them 70%. What would life look like if you gave 120%? What would it look like if you actually worked for every check you got? I truly believe that the difference between humans is how bad they want it. Take ownership of it and decide to go back to the drawing board and rewrite the script that you are the star of. You have the power to do that. On this day, you can declare that I'm going to change. As you look back on your life, you can decide that I don't like what I've produced here and I want higher ground. I want to 
begin to experience more love. I want to have more adventure in my life. I want something that gives my life a sense of meaning. Now I can appreciate that life is hard. I can appreciate that it's a struggle. I can appreciate that there's all kinds of things not going your way. But guess what? They're never gonna, unless you make them. You're blind to your own weaknesses, but you're also blind to your own strengths. How far could you take that? If you stopped wasting time, and if you stopped lying, and if you oriented yourself to the highest possible good that you could conceive of, and you committed to that, how much good could you do? Well, I would say, why don't you find out? Step out and step in. Fate has been calling you since birth, but you have to decide, is it your birthright? It's yours. Begin to claim it. You can manifest it the moment you begin to speak it. You want a bigger home? Speak it. You want a bigger career? Speak it. You want to make it to the NBA? Speak it. You want to make it in the NFL? Speak it. Begin to believe it. There may be different routes to your dream, so never give up. And a lot of us have a lot of people who support us. They support us going to school, support us with our business, support us with losing weight, with diets, all this other stuff. But they also support us when we want to quit. So that's not a good foxhole. While you're looking to get to the next level, it's truly important to look at that foxhole. Some of those people from high school, from college, they may not belong in that foxhole with you because as you grow, they stay exactly where they are. And they can't stand seeing you grow. You may sit there and look at yourself. Maybe you're even believing that because you were born a certain race or you were born to certain parents or you had shitty parents or you've suffered from depression or you're overweight or all these mother things that they put in your face to give you the exact excuse as to why you can't achieve what it is you want to achieve. You need to understand one thing and that's this. Your hardships, your challenges, your situation will either be the reason you don't make it or it will be the story you tell when you do make it and you get to make that choice. It's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. I know what it's like to operate every single day regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving. Here's something else to recognize. Wherever you are on the ladder of life, wherever you are in life, ladies and gentlemen, you've got comeback power. I don't care how low you are. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you have experienced. I don't care how devastated your life might appear to be. The shambles it might be in. There is a power in you that can enable you to be stronger and better than anything that's out here. Bring it to life. And the only way to bring it to life is to work. To grind and toil and sweat and put your life into that vision and make it a reality for the entire world to see. So stop wasting time. Stop listening to me right now. Stop and go out and do the work to bring that vision to life. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. You versus you.
One of the most circulated lies of all time is that no one cares. When you go through trials, when you go through disappointments, hardship, bankruptcy, divorce, separation, failure, eviction, firing, no one cares. People say that as if you were supposed to throw in the towel. No, the towel is thrown to you so you can wipe the sweat off your brow and go back to work. Self-doubt grows when you engage in negative talk to talk yourself out of the things you want to be trying. There is so much pain in talking yourself out of trying things. Wasting years of your life, really feeling this desire to try something and putting all your energy into talking yourself out of it. Play the long game. Aim for legendary. Don't just say, I want to be world class in my dominant pursuit for a little window of time. Say, I want to have the guts and the grit to create enduring success. yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to beat yourself up over the head. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. You were born on a day and you celebrate that, but there's another day coming. It's the day you discover why you were born. And the day you discover that, you will look back over every disappointment. You will realize that you are isolated so that you wouldn't be penetrated by the opinions of others. Belief is something, it's not, I can't tell you all oh, believe in yourself. That's a bunch of crap. Belief came from me getting up early in the morning by myself, no coach, getting myself up, motivating myself every single day. All of our actions echo into eternity. Long after we're gone, our lives also have an echo. Your life matters. What you do in your life matters. You were born to do something great with your life. You were put here for a reason, which is to make a difference in the world. Actions of your life will echo into eternity. The question is, will that echo for you be a whisper into eternity or a roar? The lack of certainty is what actually makes it worth it. Let's consider the alternative, which is that you are on the path and you are guaranteed to know that you're going to get the outcome. All of the mystery is gone. There is no excitement. Ancient Greeks would say that the gods always envied the mortals because their life was so ephemeral. They had so much chance that could happen to them. If you knew that you were going to succeed, it wouldn't be worth doing to begin with. The fact that you are uncertain when you start is what makes it worthwhile. And the fallacy of being in the pursuit is the worry or the concern that it won't amount to anything because who you are becoming is the thing that you are amounting to in real time every day. There's no better pathway to self-realization and the ennoblement of being than to posit the highest good that you can conceive of and commit yourself to it. And then you might also ask yourself, and this is definitely worth asking, is do you really have anything better to do? And if you don't, well, why would you do anything else? Those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. That is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. The time is now. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. You've never done something before. You expect yourself to be awesome at it. You haven't done the work. You haven't put in the time. You haven't put in the study hours, you haven't had the experience, but you expect to be good. And because you expect to be good, but you know you're not gonna be good, 
you don't do anything. You want to be somebody who succeeds. You want to be somebody who builds something. You want to be somebody who people write books about one day. You are going to have to be okay with being bad as for a long time. I am one decision away from a totally different marriage, a totally different life, a totally different job, a totally different income, a totally different relationship with my kids. Your life comes down to your decisions, and if you change your decisions, you will change everything. The reason most people fail is because they give up what they want most for what they want now. You would learn how to thrive and survive if no one else was there to pick you up by the bootstraps, you grabbed yourself up by them. And when you got there, you realize that there were other people who have gone through what you've gone through, and there were some who have never got there yet. But they will because you created the roadmap and the plan to win. Someone cares. Perhaps that someone is you. And it doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've done or who you were, except that all those things have brought you to this point right here and right now. And right here, right now, you are only one step away from turning your life in a different direction. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. Wisdom comes from experience, and experience takes time. The more experience you have, the more you learn from that experience, the wiser you can get. In life, people emulate the end result, not the process. The end result is what they see and they emulate that. Are you willing to put in that sort of commitment? Are you willing to practice the whole life? Yeah, I'm sure you want to be on a jet and all that, but do you want to put in that work? That's what it takes for something great, that amount of time, that level of commitment. The rarer you are, the rarer the people are who share your perspective. In this way, the greater your success, the fewer people you can share it with. Loneliness is a kind of tax you have to pay to atone for a certain complexity of mind. To grow as a person, you have to constantly challenge yourself to be a better person and a better person. You got to keep becoming a better person. You have to keep visiting your demons. You have to keep challenging yourself. You have to keep growing as a human being. And that's the hardest thing in the world because nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to face their own shit. And if you're not constantly performing without purpose, you're not going to be ready when the time comes. It's this magical thing, purpose that we're all looking for. But what's funny about it all? is that we need these things to perform. But we don't take a second to realize the purpose is always there. The purpose never leaves us because the very purpose is you. The human brain cannot comprehend the negative. It is incapable. And so what happens is we very often reinforce things when we put things in the negative, right? I can't get apart, or I can't do this, versus I'm gonna keep doing this. It's such a huge thing to convert things into the affirmative. It's the same thing for you. If you focus on the obstacles, all you will see is obstacles. It's your choice how you choose to perceive your own career. It's literally perspective. Life is hard for two reasons. It's hard because you're living in your comfort zone. It's also hard because you're trying to live outside of your comfort zone. So if you wake up in the morning and you don't want to do something, you don't care enough about yourself. 
And that's what you need to really research is, man, why am I not doing this for myself? Because that is, that is the number one purpose in life, is to better oneself. So that's the only purpose I fucking need. The moment you find what you love, you understand there's a difference between a skill and a calling. You've been called to do something great. It's about answering that call and discovering that there's something unique about you from the time you were born. God embedded inside of your will a desire to fulfill your purpose. But how do you find your purpose? Is by dialing in, focusing on the things that you love to do. That's how you answer the call to your purpose. Are you controlling the things that you are capable of controlling, okay? Because if you were to control the things that you can actually control, you would have far less chaos in your life. Because I know there's so many people that have the ability and just refuse to get off that couch, refuse to study a few more hours, refuse to go deeper, to go further. And that's where I gain the advantage. It's so easy to be great nowadays, my friend, because most people are weak. Most people don't want to go that extra mile. Most people don't want to find that extra because it sucks. If you find yourself in an anxious time, if you find yourself frustrated and angry and mad because you feel like you're continuously spinning your wheels and not getting anywhere, you are probably not controlling what it is that you control. You're not understanding that we actually control our momentum and you're frustrated because other people have it and you don't. The reason you don't is because you're not executing past the point to where things that are uncomfortable become a little more comfortable. It's not about your resume. It's about resuming your calling. A resume is just going over a study of where you've been, but that's already in your past. You're not focused on your past. You have to focus on your future. Who do you want to be and who are you when no one else is watching? That matters more than anything else. Hit resume. Take your life off of pause. Stop doing things just because it was easy. Don't do it just because someone else told you to. Trust that God has called you to do something, answer that call, then chase down everything that goes along with it and believe that there is a reason why you're the one who got the number to God in the first place. A pine tree grows and matures very fast. An oak tree grows and matures very, very slow. But which one lasts longer? And which one is stronger? Which one shelters more critters and more birds? Which one, when it's done and over and it's cut down, which one is more valuable for the lumber? People don't go out and say, I'm gonna spend extra money for some pine furniture. They want oak furniture. If you fake bravery when you're terrified, that is bravery. I kind of feel like motivation is the same thing. If you do the thing when you're feeling unmotivated, that is motivation. So don't be afraid to reinvent yourself and don't be afraid to be different, man. You ain't got to fit in the crowd. Why are you following everybody when you were clearly meant to lead? Stay focused, don't listen to nobody. What's on your mind, just do it. Cause what's destined for you, you gonna get it. The greatest gift that you can give yourself is to find something that you're naturally adept at and figure out a way to make a living at it. Because if you do that, every day will be a play day. If you love what you do, why do you want to stop doing it?